Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel and this is channel is about product design, career growth in USA. And in today's video I'm going to talk about four hard skills that each UX designer should have. Number first is design thinking. When I just moved to United States, it was two years ago, I started searching job. And uh, the first thing that I heard in almost all interviews uh, that was design thinking. So basically, let me tell a little bit about my background. I came to United States from Germany and before that I lived in Minsk, Belarus and my home country is Kazakhstan. I'm not from United States. I never learned UX design in United States and it was really interesting uh, to know what is about design thinking and why everyone telling me about it. So actually, if to tell a little bit more about the process in my uh, home country, the designers, they don't have a lot of power to influence design. And basically managers, they give the tasks and it is really strict tasks to do, for example, to create the button here or to change the color here, or we need to create the landing page and it should be like this. And it's really very detailed description how it should look. Uh, so it was around 10 years ago in my country. So I hope that everything is changed since then, but I remember it like this. And when I came to United States, what I just discovered that designers, they have a really great freedom. So managers, they come back to you with some problems, uh, which problems users have inside of your part of the product. And you decide together with your teammates, how you need to solve this problem. So basically design thinking is a process of creating designs, research this topic, research users' problems, identify these problems, then create some hypotheses, how to solve these problems, create the prototypes, and after that, test these prototypes. So after testing, you can use the right solution and implement it with engineers. And after that, you come back to phase number one with discovering and understanding the user's problems. So basically this process is called design thinking in United States. Next part that you can learn is decision mapping. If you work with your teammates, usually you have some research data or you have brainstorms or you have some kind of workshops. During these workshops, you actually showcase all this data on your whiteboard or in a digital whiteboard or you may any tables and these tables you just visualize all this information and after that you make a composition of it so all your team and stakeholders will understand the goal of this information for example you should know empathy map this map is helping you to build empathy with your users. When you build this empathy, you're thinking about such things as what users say, what users think, do or feel. And when you are articulating all this data and visualizing it and create this empathy map, you are better understanding your users and you can explain and showcase all this information to your engineers, stakeholders, your teammates. Uh, so it's going to be really helpful to make everyone empathize to your users. For example, there are also customer journey mapping. This is mapping is about how your users is using your application or product. How do they use it from stage zero until the finish? So for example, they open your app and then register or they discover something. After that, they open this page. After that, they open this page and everything until the, your goal, for example, buying tickets or a booking conference. And on this customer journey map, you just display all this information about your competitors, about people's um, feelings on each stage, about what the problems do they have, what the struggles. And with all this information, it's really easy to articulate your decisions in the end of the day. Also, there is uh, such great technique as affinity mapping. So for example, you have some kind of research information or you are doing brainstorming with your uh, teammates. And at that 
workshops, you need to showcase and group your existing information to some big groups. And these big groups help you to discuss what do you have on your hands and how are you going to use this information. So decision mapping, it's if to tell it with a easy words. Uh, it is how to showcase and how to display your information uh, that you already have or you doing during your workshop. So it is going to be easier to showing to anyone else in your team on the next stage this information if it's grouped and it's organized well. The next hard skill that each UX designer, uh, as my opinion, should have is prototyping. So prototyping is really important. For example, after you did your design in the Figma and you did all the screens, there is a stage when you need to test your designs uh, on the users and you cannot test without prototypes. So for example, in each company, it could be different prototyping tools. It could be Figma or Protopy or Axure. It's really different. I feel like it's really difficult to be prepared which prototyping tool uh, you need to learn. But if you know, for example, one, then you can do this prototyping skill and it's going to help you to really quick learn another tools if it needed for your work. So if you are a beginner designer and you don't know how to prototype, you need to start learning it and start using it in your design. And uh, the last one that I want to talk about is basic front-end coding. Around 10 years ago, when I started searching job in the United States, I end up with the information in a different uh, LinkedIn and different other search uh, engines that UX designers, product designers, they need to know how to code. I feel like right now I rarely see this on the vacancies that posted on internet. But what I'm talking about is the basic front-end coding. Uh, why do you need to know it? Uh, because when you're working as product designer, so for example, I made my design and then I hand off it to my engineering team. And after that, engineers implement it and there is a stage of QA when I need to check if does this design actually look like what I have on my Figma. And when I see the differences, for example, in lines or fonts or colors, it's really difficult without coding knowledge to explain your engineer what they need to change. So I feel like from the first standpoint, I would just make screenshots of each part of my design and send it to my engineer in order to fix it. This is really long way journey and it's really hard to communicate this way. I think that if you don't know coding, you need to make another one, one on one meeting with your engineer and you are sitting together and adjusting the coding in order to make it look as in the Figma. And if you know the coding, you can inspect these elements on the website or uh, simulate mobile application. After that, you can just adjust it inside of your web platform. So for example, you see that your font is a little bit bigger than it should be. You just inspect it. Okay. And you see that here's 10 pixels instead of eight pixels. And you just copy paste these numbers to your list of adjustment that engineer needs to be made. I feel like it's much, much easier to talk to engineer with the same language as they understand it. So if you know the exact numbers and exact color uh, like numbers and you can inspect it and accurately say, for example, instead of this, use this one. Instead of this, use this one. It's going to be much, much faster and you even don't need this extra one-on-one -on -one meeting with your engineer. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope that you like this video. Please write the comments what would you like to know more about me. Please write the comments what do you like about this video and what you don't like and see you next time. Bye-bye.